do a tutorial today that is focused around creating fluffy white cumulus cloud shapes. Now I plan to do several of these types of videos, different kinds of cloud formations, but I'm going to start with perhaps one of the most commonly thought of shapes when people think about clouds is the kind of the white fluffy version of clouds. Special thanks to Pete Horrocks on my Patreon page who's requested this type of tutorial. If you'd like to learn more about my Patreon page, there is a link down in the description for that. Now the colors that I'm going to use today are linked in the description below. So if you look at the codes that are down in the description and then you go to in Procreate here where it says value in the color section and you can type in the hexadecimal codes and then you can start to construct this palette for yourself. If you're one of my Patreons, when I link the video on the Patreon page, then there is a downloadable file for this as well. So the first range of colors that I've got selected are going to be the colors that I use for the background sky to begin with. I'm going to have it quite a blue sky, quite a um, sunny day or patchy sun. So there's going to be quite a lot of blue in the clouds and in the sky itself. So if I select the first color, which is the darkest of the blues, I'm going to make sure that I have a soft airbrush. Now it's just set to the default settings, not doing anything unusual with it. I'm going to turn the size of the brush up and then I'm just going to begin. In fact, I'm going to make it even bigger. I'm going to begin filling in large areas. Now I'm not too bothered about any lines or texture or bands that may appear in here because I could easily smooth those in with the focus, uh, sorry, the, uh, the blur feature. If I go to the next color along, I can then introduce that on the next one. Now the top part of the sky, in fact, I'm going to reduce the size of the brush down just specifically to do this. The top part of the sky is where most of the darkest area is going to be and then as it gets nearer the horizon then you're going to see more of a variation in this area. I'll just get rid of the white actually it's going to be a bit of a distraction. I'm going to go to the third palest blue and the, the bottom colour is going to be like a kind of more of a greyed out version. So the blue becomes less intense. I'm just going to go through those colors again. So I've got the darkest one at the top, then I've got a section here that is going to be the middle blue. I can have them blending into each other, then the lightest blue. I can just have them blending in a little bit more. Again, I've turned the opacity down a little bit so I can blend them in, and then it goes down to a gray. Now, I probably will actually also add a, an extra color here. So I'm going to do this on a separate layer, and I'm going to use this darker tone on full opacity just to fill in a suggestion of a kind of a silhouetted dark horizon landscape. I'm really not bothered about the detail of this. The tutorial is not really about a landscape, it is more about just the sky. So I'm just giving a suggestion that there's something on here. Maybe I can do some formations amongst that, maybe trees, but again, I'm not too concerned what's going off in this area. I just don't want it to be totally flat just a cursory kind of illusion of something else going on here. But if you want to do this yourself and you want to spend a bit more time making the horizon look like trees and buildings silhouetted, then you can do. But I just want to get straight to the clouds, okay? So if I go back to the first layer where all the sky was, if I'm not happy with the bands and I want to soften them in a bit more, then I can go to the adjustments, I can go to the uh, Gaussian blur and I can slide that along and blend it in a bit more. You don't want to do too much because then you're just going to end up blending it into it all looks like one colour. You still want separate areas and I think I'm happy with that. I've got some of strongest blue. I might just add a touch more of that darkest blue in the top however. I think that the actual top of the sky is going to be quite dark and most of it is going to be occupied by the darker blue. It's only when it gets nearer the horizon that you start to see some of these other colours mixing in. I'm probably going to blend these in again actually now I've reinstated some more colours. Not too bothered about some of the bands because there's going to be clouds and a sense of texture in there anyway. So that's not even a, a problem. But we can go to the Gaussian Blur and just allow them to blend in a little bit more if, if that suits. Okay, so we've got something of a background now. And I'm going to begin to actually talk you through some of the kind of cloud shapes that you might see appear in cumulus clouds. Can I also bear in mind that the the colours that you use for this will look different on this video than the hexadecimal code colours might appear on your iPad. Obviously the camera, um, the screen that you're watching are on, there's two different stages there where things can alter the appearance of colours. The lighting in the room here can affect it, the lens 
like I said, your screen. So there's lots of vari variants there that will change the overall appearance of the colors, which is why I've included the hexadecimal code. So you'll end up with the closest possible colors to the colors that I'm actually using here. Now, I'm going to start with a new layer and I'm gonna put it on top of all the other layers and I'm gonna to go to my colors and I'm gonna select the darkest. Now these colors are for the actual cloud formation. So I'm gonna to go to the darkest color that is for the cloud formations. And I'm going to start putting in some blobs in the sky and then it gives me something to work with. Now these parts of the clouds, in fact, I'm gonna change my brush to a, in fact, I'll leave it with the medium brush for now. I'm gonna turn the opacity down and the size of the brush to something like three or 4%. I might change that. I'm just gonna start with that and see how it goes. Yeah, that's okay. So as I was saying, this part of the cloud is going to be effectively the part of the cloud that's in shadow. So there's gonna be light coming from above and it's going to affect the top of the cloud, but when the cloud is quite dense and then facing away from the sun, then it's going to have a shadow area and underneath that is darker. Now, in terms of the formations of the clouds, now you'll notice that I'm using, obviously I'm using a medium. I could use a soft airbrush for this. It would be perhaps if you're a little bit more hesitant that I'll show you on the soft airbrush, then it helps you get a gentler kind of softer version coming in until you're ready to start adding some harder edges and some more definite forms. Maybe the soft airbrush might be easier for you. But just starting to build this up and the bottom of the cloud is gonna be a flatter formation than the top of it. Doesn't mean it's gonna be entirely flat, but it is gonna be more rounded at the actual top of these cloud shapes. So if you bear that in mind, you're going to get more of the round shapes at the top, and slightly flatter at the bottom. I think you'll end up something that looks more naturalistic more like the kind of clouds you're used to seeing in the sky. So I keep adding some layers. It doesn't matter if some of it ends up darker than the background there, that could actually be very useful. So maybe in circular motions now, keep adding layers, turn the opacity down perhaps, start adding some more layers. It's easy enough to go over this with lighter colors just to reclaim exactly where the light should be hitting. So you can't go too far wrong at this point. So what you don't want is what I had a second ago. Is it looking a bit too uniform? So maybe like some of these I started to add here, I might just have a section that starts to branch out on its own, it becomes its own strange shape sticking out. Okay, I'm gonna start doing some more shapes in a different area just to get used to doing these kind of forms. So again, slightly flatter at the bottom and then rounder, more exaggerated at the top. Not completely flat at the bottom though, there's gonna be some shapes and variation, but just reserve some of the bigger forms throughout the top. Now, if you're doing something that's gonna be at the top of the sky, bear in mind the nearer the horizon it, it is, it's gonna be further away. So anything at the top of the, the actual frame is likely to be a cloud that's much closer. So what will happen is when it's closer, you tend to see the underneath of it, but not necessarily the top edge. And also you might get a slightly softer version of the cloud because it tends to look harder edged when it's further in the distance because you start to see the whole shape, whereas when it's closer, it looks slightly more diffused, more broken apart as a form. So maybe slightly softer when it's nearer to. After, excuse me, I've had a bit of a cough. My voice is struggling at times still. So if I sound a little bit croaky or a little bit <clears throat> fainter than usual, it's because I'm still shaking off the end of a, a cold and cough. So as I said, you get some that are nearer the horizon, they're a bit further away. So we're going to make them a bit smaller. Obviously you've got scale, things that are nearer to, generally in cloud terms are gonna be bigger. If they go further away, they're gonna be smaller, obviously. Maybe we can have some forms on the in-betweens of those shapes. And still at this point being pretty loose and start to work into these and really start to get some of the details a bit more accurate afterwards. I'm just getting a sense of size and shape to begin with, with this darker tone. So flatter at the bottom, fluffier shape at the top. Remember this darker tone is a guide at the moment. I'm probably gonna cover up a lot of it with the lighter colors as well. So 
So as it does get more towards the horizon, some of those shapes can become slightly flatter, thinner, or stretched out kind of forms. More obvious round, bolder shapes at the top. Remember this is on quite a low opacity. If I put it on a large or a high opacity, then those shapes are gonna to be too bold. And it's very difficult to work with that when the forms are too, too hard edged, the opacity is too high. It is important just to keep it very loose, very light to begin with. If you have to keep pressing it over and over and over with the Apple Pencil in order to get a shape to stand out, then that's better because you've already got layers of detail built into it there. So your transitions from shapes and textures are going to be more gradual and it's definitely going to work better. I might start to merge some of these shapes together here because there's going to be breaks in the cloud, but there's definitely going to be whole chunks, whole areas of the cloud where forms are going to merge together a little bit more. This is being made up. I've looked at some photographs, but this is by no means a copy of a photograph. Photographs I find are very useful and in terms of emulating the color scheme or the textures or getting the right kind of lighting atmosphere, then yeah, you really should start to do your research, look at photographs, but you shouldn't be slavishly trying to copy from a photograph. I think it's uh, it actually makes your job more difficult, more time, laborious, and more boring. In an ideal world, you would just take note of some of the things that you see, have it as a reference, refer to it, um, but don't, don't try and copy it exactly. Just get a sense of it from a photograph and then use that as a foundation to start to invent your own shapes from that point. Okay, so I've done one layer of dark colors. I'm going to create another layer and the next cloud shape or the next cloud uh, tone rather along here is not much different. I may well come back and use that tone, but I'm going to move it up to a more exaggerated lighter color now. So I've got the full range of colors that I may choose to use, but actually I think if I start to do it too gradually, it's, it's going to take ages to get to the interesting parts of the tutorial. So I'm going to not quite go with white, but I'm going to go for the next color along. So it's a very light color and I'm going to have to be, like I say, on another layer, size of the brush down this time, opacity pretty low. And what I want to be doing at this point is picking out along the top edge, in fact, I'll turn the opacity up a little bit and the brush size down a little bit more. I want to be getting now a sense of the light coming from above. So I'm going to go around the top edge of some of these round shapes and just cook them in and just start to define some of the, the lighter edges, some of the shapes at the top of the cloud. This is going to be the bit where the clouds start to come to life. So you can see I'm going around the actual outer edge, first of all. So that might be the best starting point is to go around the very outer edge of the whole cloud, be systematic about this. My tendency is to just have a general idea of how it looks and just kind of go at it in all sorts of random ways. But in, for the benefit of the tutorial, I'm trying to give you a more systematic approach. So if we go around the, the whole outer edge of some of these formations, I'll do this across the middle section, and then I'll repeat the process. But there's also gonna be some formations that cut across in the middle too. So use some of the formations because you've kept it quite loose on a lower opacity you'll have some natural shapes that are still visible there so there's no harm in taking your cue from some of those bits of texture that are still visible and use them as a visual cue to start adding more layers in there so you've got the outer edge nice and clear and now there's going to be some more central textures coming in here as well so you get layers Again, I can see some more textures coming in here, so I'm just starting to go around some of those. It's important that I'm not adding anything at the bottom of the cloud at this point because it's really going to confuse the image. It all needs to be focused on the light that's coming from above and hitting the upper shapes. So I'll start again on a different cloud area, I'll go around the top. Now, obviously, if you're doing a particular kind of landscape where the sun is coming from a different part of the sky, then you will have to adjust that. I'm just trying to start with something that's quite generic, quite basic to begin with in this particular tutorial. Any future cloud tutorials, I might go for something that's a bit more unusual or a more dramatic lighting. But for this particular piece, I'm trying to go for something where the lighting is coming straight from above, slightly from behind, and it's creating this dramatic effect. Now, if the light was coming from slightly above and in front, then you would have more of this 
filled in white and that would create a different lighting impression like the sun was coming from up here, down on it. But I want something where maybe the sun is coming from slightly to the rear. And so it's mainly gonna pick up on the, the edges of the clouds. I think it's a look that I prefer slightly more, a bit more dramatic. So I'm just sharpening up the, the line a little bit. Start to go over some of these shapes, just really define them a little bit more. Maybe on some of these areas at the rear, I can have more blocked in areas of pale tone. Remember, I've got different types of gray here for the cloud. So some of those tones you can use just to block in. But to be honest, I mean, some of those colors you're going to achieve simply by using the two extremes. So you could use that color and that color. The white is for the real extreme but you could use the palest version of the clouds and the darkest, and simply by using a low opacity, you'll kind of hit those middle colors by default anyway. So it depends what you like to do really. If, you've, if you're less patient and you want to block in straight away, then that, the colors are there for you to do that. If you're happy to let the, the color scheme build up with a slightly more labor intensive form, then you can do what I'm doing and just use the darkest color for the formations and then the lightest color to build up the texture and you'll get the overall effect that way. So again, the Apple Pencil is pressure sensitive, so there's sometimes I press on harder and I'll get a darker version. For some of the others, I'm, I'm having a slight adjustment, so I want it to be a bit lighter, so I'm only pressing on lightly. So just like you would shade with a, an Arial Pencil, you use the, the pressure to your advantage. So it's one thing to, that's perhaps a little bit more difficult to convey on these tutorials is the pressure that I'm actually applying, which is why I'm just, just trying to describe it a little bit. So I'm pressing on lightly for some areas. If I want there to be delicate details, then you just have to use light pressure. Now there's gonna be some bits of the cloud that break off and they're not gonna be dense enough to have their own shadows, but they're dense enough, they're enough of a concentration to actually pick up the light. So they will, pick up the highlights, but they won't create a shadow. So there's definitely gonna be some breakaway sections of the clouds here that pick up the light. So it's important to include some of those. So again, I'm just going over some of these edges, going over them to intensify the lighter colors because initially I put them in just a little smaller amount just to make sure I got a sense of where they belong, but now I'm happier with where they are, I can make them even brighter. In fact, it's something at this point, I could go to the whitest color and start using that now to really create an intense light area in some of these areas of cloud. Might turn the opacity down though. So again, with the opacity turned down, even just using the, I mean, it's not actual white, it's almost white, it's got a hint of blue in there, but just using this whitest color and just on a low opacity starting to go along the edge, add some very light, breakaway forms coming at the edge of the cloud, building up very gradually. There's a lot you can do with the extremes of tone, as long as you use pencil pressure in the mix. So I'm going to use some of that effect now across the, the rest of the sky range. Um, when I've got something extra that I need to tell you, I shall stop and explain that as well. But just for a minute or so, I'm just going to apply the, the effects across the whole sky. So I'm just using the white color now to really define some of these edges. I think the more defined some of these are, the more contrast there is, the more dramatic these clouds are going to look. Depends on the effect you're going for, but I've got quite empty looking blue sky in patches, therefore the light hitting the clouds is gonna be quite intense. So therefore 
the edges should be quite bright. So I'm just going around making them a bit more exaggerated, sharpening them up. Now this is the kind of tutorial, unlike some of my other ones where there's very much a step-by-step -step instruction, this is an effect type of tutorial. Now it's not reliant on a particular brush, one technique. It is the kind of thing that you have to definitely have a go at, practice. All I can really do is give you some general tips like I've been doing, but then it comes down to just applying it, practicing it until you get more comfortable at these kind of shapes, formations, and you develop an eye for what looks natural, what looks better, but it definitely requires an element of judgment for the, sh the shapes that you're using. And that sensitivity to what looks right is something that you acquire over time. It's not something that you're necessarily gonna get right first time, so don't expect if it's the first time you're really having a go at clouds that it's gonna work instantly for you. It's about really starting the process of trying to understand what, what works and what doesn't. I think one of the most common conversations I have teaching at school is with students, with pupils that say they can't do something. And I think it's a natural inclination to say you can't do something to give up and be very frustrated with it. If it doesn't go right first time, it's a natural, understandable impulse. But fortunately with art, it's one of those things you have to persevere through. I don't think there's an artist alive that hasn't struggled, hasn't been frustrated, hasn't felt that feeling of wanting to give up. But you just need to keep applying yourself, keep trying the process and you will get better. Unfortunately, there's not always a magic bullet, a quick fix for these things. You just have to spend the time, put the time in, and you will get better. But along the way, I'm trying to give you some general sense of things that perhaps you need to be including. There might be some very basic things that you, you're not doing in your clouds that are stopping them looking quite right. And these clouds are pretty basic, to be honest. They're not, they're not by any stretch the most convincing looking clouds if I was to zoom in. I'm just trying to get an overall sense in a slightly more simplistic uh, way. So at least a basic impression of the effect can be achieved. Just some hints of white broken texture of cloud at the top. These are just wisps of cloud, low opacity that may have broken from some very close up clouds at the top of the horizon. This is something I could definitely spend another hour or so at, but I just I try to keep my tutorials manageable in size rather than having them huge sprawling lessons that span over an hour. I'm trying to keep them relatively condensed to give you the, the general sense of it. And then I'm going to do more cloud tutorials and hopefully we'll get into more detail in future ones anyway. So we can build on this knowledge. Once we've got a sense of what's working for some of these foundation shapes, then we can build on those and start to get some more complex ideas across later on. So if you like, think of this as part one, lesson one in a series of cloud tutorials. And I'm going to give you some more varied ideas later on. And then hopefully get to the point where we can combine different cloud formations, different types of effects of cloud even within the same images. Just a few blobs here and there, just to give you a sense of some of the wispy bits that come off it. But I'm gonna leave it there for now. Now, like I said, it's, it's far from perfect. I could endlessly fiddle with this cloud formation, really sharpen up some of the details, zoom in so you can see some absolute refined details. But in terms of the general effect of cumulus clouds, I'm gonna leave that for now. I will return to other cloud formations in the future. Please make sure to subscribe. If you are interested in supporting me over my Patreon page, there is a link for that down in the description. Otherwise, I shall catch you back here again. Thanks for watching, see you later.